So hello people, today a quick one from Cyprus, a little bit improvised, I hope the sound is okay. Anyways, I learned something new today, uh, which is there's, there's no hyper switch anymore. So in case you don't know what hyper switch is, so one of the most important functions that you can get from your operating system is the ability to go back to the previous window with just one keystroke, right? In the windows, you would usually do that with alt top, usually. Right? I don't know what else there is on Windows, but this is the default thing on Windows. On Mac, I don't know what there is on Mac. I do believe there are some tools for Mac that emulate that as well. I don't know. And since I use Arch Linux with Hyperland, so I'm on Hyperland, I use so far something that is called HyperSwitch. And now I learned today there is no HyperSwitch anymore. So the same author that wrote HyperSwitch to emulate the all top like behavior improved his thing and made it so much better apparently that he, called it, he gave it a different name. And he calls it HyperShell now. And today we're going to have a look at this, it's going to be a very quick one. So HyperShell aims to accomplish the same thing as HyperSwitch, just a little bit better. So what does better mean? I said here, in short, we made it, uh, in short, he made it more customizable, more reliable, easier to integrate and gave us a launcher as well. So we don't even need Rofi anymore. So the whole thing looks a little bit like this, but better than on a screenshot, I think I just show it right away on my screen. So I have two key bindings, it is, which is alt top, which gives you the Windows like alt top behavior, right? And then the other thing is, as I said, you get a launcher right here. So that would be for my configuration, which you also find in the article, would be alt space. And then you find two things. You find number one, the launcher up here, where you can just type in any program, and then it would launch the program. And the other thing in the bottom line is that it looks a little bit like Altop, but the, main, the major difference here is that it's not just toggling through windows, it also organizes the windows by workspace. So the numbers you find right here are the actual workspace numbers, so it gives it a little bit more. You, you see this right here in, in workspace six, I have two windows open. And it, it, it dis, and it displays that thing accurately right here. And when I go back to the Altop, you see that I don't have a workspace separation here. I just have my windows, which is fine as well. I really just want to go to the, to the latest window. I don't really care what desktop it is or what workplace it is. And I think we finished the video with a look at the configuration of how to configure the thing. So when you scroll down in the article, which I will link in the description, of course, you find my configuration. Yeah, and I did things like, I kept the scale, you can have things like items per row. Any configuration you find here, you will have an explanation for in the official documentation, which also put the link inside. So when I go to the configure page and I look for items per row, then I have the explanation of everything and I can really make it my own on top of the TOML configuration. You also get CSS to manipulate. So when I go to the, when I go to the file path, and it has two files. Tomal, the Tomal file that I just went through, and then you also can define styles. And what you also can do if you don't want to generate this config, you can also do hyper shell, I believe, config generate, and then you would have, you know, it already wants me to already have a config, and it would guide me through my preferences uh, and build the Tomal file for me if I wanted to. And once you're done with your configuration, you can do a hyper shell con config, and there's a check, I believe, and the hypershell config check goes through the Tomo file and, and sees if there's any syntax mistake or something like that. And then it would, would scream at you. For example, if I go back and I go through the Tomo and I say version Mickey, and then I would go back and do a config check, then it screams at me, right? So not, not too bad to have. The thing that didn't work so far for me, it states in the readme that in the moment you manipulate or you update the, the config, then it automatically sources or resources this Tomo file and you, you just have the fresh configuration working. It's not really the case right now. I didn't find any manual source command for, for this configuration. And whenever I change something, I have to log out and log back in again to see my changes. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. It's not like I'm constantly changing those settings. It's just something, it's just something that I recognize as I build my config. But once the config is done, like again, you don't change this every day, I believe. Anyways, that was it for now. Uh, is there anything else I want to talk about? No, not really. Have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.